Science week is a long week, but I want to start it even earlier and start your week right, because this weekend does mark the start of National Science Week, so I thought we'd better talk to a superstar of, well, STEM, so science, technology, engineering and maths. Dr Leela Landowski joins us now from Hobart. G'day, Leela. I'm sorry I had to wake you up so early this morning, but worthy because we're, you know, just going to nerd out about some science news. And... You've got a story about lack of sleep maybe not being yeah. so good for us. That's right, that's right. So um, this is a, a, a very small study, but very well controlled study out of the United States um, from the Mayo Clinic. And really what they showed is that visceral fat, which is the kind of fat which is deep in our ab abdomen, like surrounding our guts, um, it, we, it's associated with um, having a lack of sleep. And this is important because we know that um, subcutaneous fat, which is the kind of fat, you know, when you grab your skin and you wiggle it around, that's subcutaneous fat. We know that that kind of fat is um, less dangerous potentially than this visceral fat, which is deep inside us. This visceral fat is associated with things like having um, increased risk of diabetes, stroke, heart attacks. So if we can avoid it, that's a great thing. So what this study really showed us is that um, people who uh, had only about four hours of sleep as opposed to nine hours of sleep made more of this visceral fat. In fact, after just two weeks, they had about 11% more of this oh, visceral fat. What? So that's quite worrying. Yeah, that's, that's so quick. Yeah, that's right. And I look, it really just kind of solidifies this importance about sleep. So we've known for a long time that sleep serves this amazing constellation of functions. It's helping us turn short-term memories into long-term memories. It's, um, it's getting rid of all the waste that builds up in our brain over the course of the day. That gets removed when we sleep. It's resetting our emotional regulation. It's resetting our immune systems. It's resetting our metabolism. And look, I think probably the best example of why sleep how, how much sleep can affect our bodies is, you know when we have um, daylight savings and we lose an hour of sleep? Mm. Well, when that happens, there's an increase in heart attacks of about 24%, which is phenomenal just from losing this one hour of sleep. Wow. So sleep uh, clearly is incredibly important for us. How, how long does that last? Is that just a quick blip or is that something that, that pushes along for, for quite some time, that, that increase just, in heart attack cases? Just the next day. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Well, yeah. OK, so terrible news for breakfast presenters, because obviously no sleep, <laughs> but I'm an optimist. I think I'm going to be fine. And yeah. there's some science that that might help me as well, right? That's right, that's right. This is really exciting stuff. So, look, we've known for a long time that um, optimists tend to have a better sense of well-being, they tend to be stressed less, they tend to be happier, they tend to have less cardiovascular health issues, and the new science out of America is showing us that they also live longer. So this is um, research that was conducted over 25 years in over 160,000 people Ooh. in what they call the Women's Health Initiative. And that study was basically started to try and figure out ways to get postmenopausal women to have less um, cardiovascular disease and heart attacks and, and cancer and so forth. But what they did in this study is back in 1991, they got the women to do this quiz and essentially figured out where they were on the scale of being an optimist versus a pessimist, right? So um, they found that the optimists, the, the one who were the most optimistic, lived well into their 90s, which is remarkable. And considering um, that the average um, age of in the, the Western world um, for, for women is about 80, 84 years old. So that's extreme longevity. Wow, I am on board with that. Okay, so studying women, <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to translate across. Hey, I, I, in, the, in the introduction there, I called you a superstar, and that's not just because I was being nice. You're an actual <laughs> superstar of STEM. What is that program? Well, this program really exists to get um, increased diversity. So if I ask you to close your eyes now, mm -hmm. uh, listeners, please close your eyes. Imagine a geologist, imagine a mathematician, imagine a botanist, imagine a neuroscientist. What did you picture? If you happen to picture um, a, a white middle-aged guy in a lab coat with fuzzy white hair, 
maybe that's what you've pictured, but that's part of the problem. If we can't um, picture these more diverse people, it makes it harder to imagine that that's a possible career option for us. And really, this is a problem because there's only um, the STEM workforce, the science, technology, engineering and mathematics workforce, is only about 35% women. There's about 20% women in the top jobs. And that's a problem because we know that more diverse workforces have better outcomes. So really, if we want to promote um, success in Australia, we really need to be promoting these diverse voices. So what this program is really about is getting these diverse people from you know, different cultural backgrounds, different um, you know, socioeconomic backgrounds, all of these things, getting these people into the media, into schools, promoting that, that, that kind of a career option is valid for them. Mm. Well, you are one of the best superstars. Thank you so much for joining us once again <laughs> on News Breakfast. Happy National Science Week. I know it's not there yet, but I reckon it should be a month anyway, so time is fine That's for right. that. Uh, I think both of us, are a nap on, on the cards and just some more optimism, eh? That's right. Let's do that. <laughs> awesome. Leela Landowski, thank you so much once again. Team, oh, there you go. More sleep and feeling optimistic. That's the, the secret to a long life. Um, we might be stuffed. Oh, yeah, we're well, yeah, clearly stuffed. But I'm with you, mate. Science, uh, Mark, let's not stop at a science.